Good afternoon. I'm out in the vegetable garden and I'm just gonna be puttering. I've got most of my plants planted, most of my seeds. What I'm gonna do is just weed out some of my herbs that I've spread and then take off the tops of some herbs that are going to seed that I don't wanna to go to seed and basically just putter because puttering in the garden is my favorite. Also, like these hops that have basically taken over the entire this side of the garden, I'm gonna get those out because they are really, they're like, they're taken over and like it's pretty intense. Hops uh, are vines and they, they are very hardy and it's super cool. The vines have like this, uh, if you can see, there's like a Velcro. It feels like Velcro. Uh, and you can basically just stick it to a place and it'll stay because it's, it's got that Velcro feel to it. Um, but it is using my entire garden um, on this side as its climbing post. And so I'm going to just take out a ton of that. We don't make beer. Uh, we don't use hops to make beer. Uh, I use hops as a pollinator, and I also use it, um, the hops are good for um, helping sleep and calm down people. Uh, so I don't like to give it to men per se because there's a whole lot of estrogen in hops. And so that's why when you see uh, a gentleman who has maybe drank a lot of beer in their lives, they'll end up having... Um, a womanly chest, we'll say it like that, uh, is because of all the estrogen in the beer. And so um, I, I told that to my husband one time, and I don't think he's drank beer since then. Uh, he has been a purely whiskey man at that point, at, since then, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's a hot day. Um, so I've got my scarf on so I can hopefully kind of keep the sweat and the hair out of my eyes. And um, I'm just going to putter and have fun with it. Okay, well, here we go. Okay, so I am finishing up, just kind of taking care of all the all the the spreading herbs that that I didn't want to have in certain areas. There's a couple more that I could get to, but in the mail, uh, I just got these three spiderwort spiderwort bare root plants, and I was hoping that they were going to come today and I have this empty spot on my in my garden right here um, next to my ashitaba my eggplant and my catnip and I was thinking I would plant it right here so it's actually perfect that it came right now my mother-in-law just gave it to me um, and I just got done weeding this area so works out really really well okay so it came in this plastic bag with a a paper towel 
I ordered this off of Etsy. Uh, I've gotten a few things off of Etsy now as far as uh, bare root plants and herbs and seeds. And actually all of our, all of our hatching eggs came off of Etsy. And I have to say, I'm very pleased because um, the last time that I candled the eggs uh, that came through the mail, um, they had, like, it was a 98% um, growth rate. I mean, candling and seeing things are actually developing. Um, when I first put them in, I candled them and nothing was happening. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't getting, like, old developed eggs or something like that. But anyway, so we got duck eggs. No, we have ducks. What did we get? We got goose eggs, guinea eggs, and quail eggs. Um, and they are all doing really well, and they should all hatch in, I think it's 11 days now, which is super exciting. Okay, there's the bare root plants. Now, spiderwort can be considered a very enthusiastic self-seeder, which doesn't scare me at all. I mean, I had evening primrose in here, and I got evening primrose seedlings everywhere, and what do I do? I just pull them up. That's all you gotta do, you just pull them up. If they come up in a place that you don't want. I like the idea of self-seeders because they seed themselves. You don't have to do the work, and obviously you want that plant because you bought it and you, and you planted it, right? So um, once it establishes itself, then you have it, and you can just let it do its thing unless some seeds come up where you don't want them to and then you just pull those out. I mean, I mean, it really doesn't get much simpler than that. But anyway, I'm going to plant these while the, the roots are still damp. Spiderwort. I'm very excited about that. I'm going to put that right here in this corner that I got right here. Okay, so um, since it is described as a enthusiastic self-seeder, or some might say slightly invasive, but um, that's a, a video for another time, probably a very controversial video for another time. Um, this is not an invasive plant. It just, it's like, it's like planting mint in the ground. As long as you know how to take care of it, it's fine. And I know how to take care of it. So, And I'm willing to put in the work that it takes to take care of it. So that's a big difference. Um, mint is easily taken care of if you know how to do it right and you're willing to do the work. So uh, the same thing for spiderwort. But my garden is on a, on a hill on the side of a mountain. And you can see it goes upwards this way. Now I have some open spaces in my beds this way, but I don't want to put it up there because then if it does self-seed, all those seeds are going to spread down through the rest of my garden beds. And so what I'm going to do is I have it down here at the bottom of my garden. And so if the water washes some of the seeds down, it's going to either sow it into the grass where we mow it down anyway, or it's going to just keep it in the bed that I planted it in originally. So. Those are the only two options it has, unless it's going to spread by wind, in which case um, it's fine. I just take care of it. So um, I'm excited. My mother-in-law got these um, these little uh, plant labels, and uh, because this has been. Uh, a big project of mine to plant this this herb garden and I planted a lot of perennial herbs here uh, while she was still working and busy doing her job and um, and she wasn't as involved with it then and so uh, now I have all these these plant labels and we went around today and I told her what everything was so that she doesn't have to keep asking me what's planted where um, because I remember but I just I haven't written it down for anybody, so this is kind of nice.
Okay, so I decided against doing the food forest, or not the food forest. Can you tell where my heart is at? Uh, I decided against doing the medicinal herb garden tour today. I think I'm going to do that tomorrow because I want to be able to devote a lot of time to that because I don't want to just tell you what I have growing. I would like to tell you a little bit about um, why I grow it and what it's good for and maybe even like some growing conditions that I used for each one. Um, because the herb garden is actually very special, I think. I, this was like my first project. I grew this because my husband has uh, Lyme's disease. I decided that I didn't want to do so much of the, of the chemical medications for our family anymore as much as possible. Uh, and now like I'm on antibiotics right now because I just had two wisdom teeth taken out and she had to leave one in just the base of it and kind of sew the gums up over top of it. And she was a little bit concerned that maybe there'd be an infection. So I'm taking the antibiotics and I'm gonna do the full thing. I'm not against modern medicine. But if at all possible, at all, you can do something to either support or facilitate healing naturally with herbs, well, I want to have those herbs and then prepared in a way that I can take it or give it to my family immediately upon them needing it. Uh, it also became very important to me when my mother got breast cancer. Now, pretty much my entire family has had cancer. Literally, my entire family, both sides of my family, my mother's side, my father's side, and my father uh, just passed away from that two years ago. And my mother had gone through all this chemo and radiation and stuff like that. And it occurred to me that I needed to create a medicinal herb garden so that we could have things that combat cancer before you get the cancer. Or if you have cancer, to help battle the cancer, to help facilitate. And I came up with that idea three years ago. One of the greatest regrets of my life is that I didn't come up with it like 10 years ago so that I could have all that medicine ready to go when my dad was diagnosed. Anyway. So this medicinal herb garden was born from that. And I mean, this whole COVID thing that happened, if you weren't battling COVID, you couldn't go to the doctor for a good majority of the year last year. What do you do? Well, you hope you have something like a medicinal herb garden which we did, and I'm thankful for that. And we used a lot of the things because stuff comes up. So anyway, I planted this medicinal herb garden and I wanted to do it right for obvious reasons. But I didn't know exactly how to do that. And I was searching all over YouTube, the internet, books, anything I could find, and I couldn't find anything, anything. I found one book that taught me how to grow medicinal herbs and a medicinal herb garden. Everything else that I found out there was 
This is how you can grow lavender. And did you know that lavender calms? Yeah, I know that. Everybody knows that. I want to know, how do you grow Dan Shen? Right? How do you grow African dream root? How do you grow Ashitaba? And how do you harvest that and use it? What about Elecampane? What about Wormwood? What about, you know, all these different things that are not common, but are powerful medicinal tools that you can grow in your garden? I couldn't find a single thing. Couldn't find a single thing. I found a book. Actually, technically I found two books. That was cool. By, and I'm going to pronounce his name wrong because I'm just the world's worst pronouncer, uh, Rico Keck. And he does, um, it used to be known as Horizon Herbs. It is now known as Strictly Medicinal Herbs. And that's based out of Oregon, I believe. And 90% of the herbs that I have in my garden, I am growing because I ordered seeds from him or I ordered the plants, small ones, <laughs> small ones, not big ones. And his plants came beautifully. I mean like really, really great plants. And his seeds always germinated. Well, most of the time, pretty sure it was user error on a few of them. Um, but, That's the only thing I could find. So I'm kind of excited to share with you guys my medicinal herb garden because I still haven't found anybody anywhere who has the type of herbs that I have growing for the purposes that I do. And I know a lot of people who order herbs online from like Rose Mountain Herbs. Great resource. Really, really great resource. But... I don't want to buy herbs when I can grow the herbs and have an endless supply. So I want to know how to grow them. And it took a lot of trial and error. I finally got Rico's books and I was able to read from him. You should have seen me. I got them last year. I was on my beach vacation when I was finally able to read them. Uh, they'd come in the mail like a week before and I would be sitting by the pool and all my family's playing in the pool or sitting there talking about stuff, drinking a beer, something like that. And, and I'm like, oh my goodness, guys, you got to read this book. It's so wonderful. The way he he uh, wrote is speaks to my soul. And, and I'd read them things. And I, I think you had to be an herb person or a gardener in order to really get it. But they were very, very kind and they, they, um, appeased me by listening <laughs> to me ramble on. I was just so excited. I was just so excited. So um, anyway, I want to give it its full uh, due um, when I show you the herb garden because uh, there's a lot of stuff here. I'd like to have a list with me and have like the, uh, the Latin names. So if you guys want to know like the exact variety that I'm growing, uh, because I chose the varieties that I'm growing because they are either the most medicinal or uh, medicinal in the way that I felt was more needed for our family. And so I have a ton of cancer fighting herbs. I have a ton of herbs for uh, depression and Lyme's disease. I have a bunch of adaptogenic herbs. I have herbs for snake bites. <laughs> We got a lot of snakes out here. I got herbs for wounds and um, bleeding and bone setting and um, ad did I say adaptogenic? So that just making the whole body work the way that it's supposed to. Um, I've got stuff for sleep. I've got stuff for energy. I've got stuff for, you know, being able to wash our clothes. <laughs> so anyway, um, Oh, you know, if our animals get worms, if we get worms, ew, <laughs> that'd be so bad. Um, although I have heard that if you have animals, you have worms, and that's just the way that it is. I just prefer not to think about that. Um, anyway, 
I have herbs for women's needs. I have herbs for men's needs. Um, I, there's so many herbs in this garden. My mother and I, mother-in-law and I walked around and we put the, um, the tags in front of them just in this part of the garden, not in the food forest. And after I filled up this part of the garden, I started filling the food forest too. So there's a bunch in the food forest, but we used 40 tags in here alone and we didn't uh, we didn't label the things that were obvious what they were because we didn't need to. So like the yarrow bed has no name tag because we know that it's yarrow. The fennel, the chamomile, you know, the, um, the eucalyptus, the, you know, there's, um, the, the hishuwu, the jigulon. We didn't, we didn't label those because we know what they are. Um, anyway. Tomorrow, I'll, t I'll show you guys all about what the medicinal herb garden looks like. And I am thrilled and honored to be able to do this video because uh, this is the first official medicinal herb tour uh, of Fay Hollow Homestead. And hopefully somebody out there will see it who is like me, who is trying to create this medicinal herb garden. Um, with something other than lavender and rosemary and lemon balm. And, um, of course, I have those things too because, you know, they're really good. And there's a reason why everybody talks about them. But anyway, okay. So I'm just going to keep getting water. Um, I just watered my eggplants um, and some seeds that I planted. I'm going to water my tomatoes. I see a big clump of grass I got to get out. And I'm probably going to end up watering my licorice as well. <sighs> okay, well, back to the watering. I just have to show you this. I'm, I'm digging some burrows for my radish seeds and there's just so many worms. It's so exciting. Let me show you. Look at this big guy, this big guy. Look at this big guy. <laughs> They're coming out everywhere. And this is from a place that didn't have worms at all. Like I was considering buying worms because we didn't have any. Look at this beautiful calendula coming up. Calendula, calendula. My pepper plants. And all these little rows that I just dug, I'm gonna be planting radishes in. I've got a gourmet blend. I've got watermelon radish, which I'm very excited about. I'm going to be pickling and fermenting a lot of these because I am just in love with that. So, <laughs> and then white hailstone. So apparently we're a big, uh, really big fan of the white radishes. And then this is just going to be a fun blend. So, and it was cheap. I mean, look at that four for a dollar. So we'll see. I am planting a ton of radishes. Like, this is a lot of radishes and I'm, I'm probably like if I have more seed available I'm gonna go to another spot in the garden that I'm thinking of and plant some more radishes there too because um, I want to plant a lot of radishes and uh, we are not big uh, fresh radish eaters um, my dad was the only one that I know that actually likes to eat like a fresh radish I mean they are way too spicy for me um, even the really mild ones are, but when they are pickled or they are, um, when they are fermented, I love them so much. And so, uh, I am very okay planting a ton of radishes that will all kind of mature around the same time because I'm just going to process them, ferment them, pickle them, and can them, and then I will 
have them available for later whenever we want to snack on them. So it's not like I want to uh, succession plant these because we're not looking for fresh radishes. We're looking for some fermented ones and stuff like that. So uh, getting them all planted and then harvesting them all at the same time means that I get to uh, have one big day of it and then be done and then I have the radishes for the rest of the year and then I also have that garden space for the rest of the year and I also don't have to worry about remembering when to come out, when to succession plant, when was the last time that I planted the radishes, is it the right moon phase that I can plant these root um, crops, like stuff like that. It gets complicated. So I just know that now is when I want to plant these and I'm going to plant them all so that we have a ton of radishes. Hopefully, if all goes well, uh, to be able to um, process and have for our eating desires for the rest of the year. So I thought I saw a bowl hole. So I stuck my thumb in it and tried to fill it in. And it was squishy. There was something inside the hole. Oh, let me show you what I found. He's a toad. I'm sorry, Mr. Toad. Oops. I hope I didn't mess up his, his hunting scheme too much. I'm gonna kinda bury him a little bit with a little hole above his head. Oops. Okay, I'm gonna keep planting radishes because I got a ton of radishes. <laughs> I put a couple of rows of turnips in there, the purple top, because I just wanted to see what a pickled turnip would taste like. The entire garden is planted. There are some little tiny spots here and there. Actually, this bed right here could be done. Something could be done with that. I might put watermelon here. I might put a watermelon there. I don't know. But, um, Pretty much everything else is planted. Uh, the seeds are all planted. Um, the plants are all planted until next, um, I can't form my words right now. What are, what are the words that I want to say? Until July when I need to put things out that uh, are good for starting our fall harvest. So. Tomatoes are in, peppers are in, eggplants, onions, basil, herbs, carrots, radishes, turnips, uh, zucchini, watermelon, pumpkins, like peas, beans, all the things, all the things are in. Um, and I have more room than I thought that I would, which is very exciting. So I get to kind of play with one area and see what I want to do. But other than that, all I got to do is just keep everything copacetic, happy, healthy, we have some dry days, come out here, water it, um, and uh, watch for pest control. You know, if we're getting any tom tomato hornworms or something like that, but I mean, other than that, I am done. We are into the lazy days of summer, which are the things that directly precede the crazy days of summer, uh, where you're harvesting and um, where you're harvesting and you are prepping and canning and stuff like that. So I'm very happy to be in this stage where I 
and just enjoy things. I can go out into the food forest, cut some flowers, pinch back some zinnias. I think I need to prune some zinnias. Uh, they should be coming up now. Um, okay, well, I'm gonna water these babies in. Baby seeds, so cute. Um, and then I'm gonna call it a night and go sit by the fire with my handsome husband. The fire master. Anyway, I love the weekends. I hope that you guys have a wonderful night. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you could hit the like button, the subscribe button, the notification button, all those things that would really help me out a lot. I, I'm just really grateful for you guys. I am honored and blessed that I get to share this uh, daily gardening experience with you guys and, and working with the animals and the food forest and everything like that. It is, I am so blessed to be able to share that with you. So thank you. For those of you who have subscribed, thank you so much. Have a wonderful night and stay blessed.